This poem is one of my folklore series. Uh, it's poem number 80. It's called St. Bega's Bracelet. By the title you can tell it's about uh, St. Bega, who landed at St. Bees and founded uh, a priory or a monastery there at one time. And this is... Uh, concerning the legend that the lady had a, a magical bracelet. Eighty St. Bega's bracelet. The sky today was leaden grey. Muted traffic noises heard. The mist-washed street was slick and neat. Not a sound from any bird. As I turned at will to stroll downhill, my gaze to the horizon drawn. A lonely mill was turning still, grey steels and quite forlorn. On Stanley breast it tried its best to give the world some power. Its spinning blades in hypnotic waves made my subconscious flower. My inner eye was prompted by a thought of days of yore and a fleeing girl her life a whirl landing on a nearby shore. A father stern, as she would learn, had promised her as a bride to a Viking chief bound in fief in Erin's green countryside. This lady fair had vowed elsewhere to a much more pious course to become a bride at a serious side and shun all earthly laws. In an open boat staying afloat, she crossed the Irish Sea. Landing at St. Bees, she sank to her knees and thanked the Lord gratefully. A local lord who ruled by the sword received her in his hall. She stood at hand and asked for land, be it large or small, to spread God's word to the common herd, and so the Lord avowed, in a mischievous way on Midsummer's Day, to give her land on which it snowed. The very next day, the sky led in grey, the snow fell thick and laid. The Lord in all looked at the snow. He kept his word to the maid. She would found a cell, the legends tell, to preach and convert all, who passed this way by night or day to all creatures, great or small. Possessor yet of an amulet that a heavenly being had given, she would heal the land by wave of hand. Her reputation thus was driven. On Stanley breast she then had blessed a spring of water in a well. On the road above, dedicated with love, she built a chapel to St. Michael, so that all who passed could break their fast with healing water pure and cold. The monks would bring up from the spring pots of this liquid gold. But to this story, old and hoary, danger came with Viking raids, for a Viking band pillaged the land, the lady became afraid. Moving in land with a small band, she sought to preserve her virginity, a church she created at Bassenthwaite, moving east with dignity. The holy charm encircling her arm, she left to bless the land with grace, and homage was paid to this sacred maid by John of Hale upon the brace. It's feared the charm came to harm in the Protestant Reformation. No sight nor sound can be found after the Priory's dissolution. And to this day, in my own way, I've been drawn into this tale of a sacred charm on the lady's arm and the holy well in the vale. St. Big as well as legends tell, was renowned for its healing way. Did those monks in fear find somewhere near to conceal her bracelet to this day? My musings done, I carried on, passing the road to Low Hall Farm. Did St. Big's spring its blessings bring from a lady's sacred charm? So I read a list well to the tale I tell of a lady chaste and true, though lost in time to story and rhyme, its conclusion I leave to you. Thank you.